But all right, so here's the deal. So everybody is getting worried about the market, right? You know, the interest rates are creeping up. The national, if you're looking at it, it's saying 5.54. If you go over and look at Google interest rates, so I don't know how accurate this is. They're saying 7%. Somebody earlier said 7%. So a lot of people are looking at interest rates going, oh, oh my gosh. It was The Fed's just met today, right? Yeah, they're going up 0.75%. Yep. So they're going to increase the rate even more. So I'm starting to hear people say, oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. But I'm like, okay, look. I guess here where I'm thinking is if you're going to wait, interest rates are definitely not slowing down. Would you rather get into a home that you love at 6%? That said 7%, but I'm seeing 6% still. It, it could be higher. Uh, would you rather get into a home that you love now for that percent or rent or hate where you live waiting for the rates to come down and the prices to come down if they come down? Does that make sense? No, that no makes sense. I, I am a big proponent, and we talked about this before, of really, um, if it fits with your within your monthly budget, uh, no matter right now, of course, raising interest rates is going to affect your monthly payment. But if there's a house that uh, still fits within your monthly payment, uh, I actually thought about this today. It's probably, this is the time as a buyer, you have the leverage. I said this before. Whoever's, the seller has been having the leverage last two and a half, three years. Now, because of high interest rates, seller is just not getting the multiple offers. Now, depending on location, you might still get multiple offers, but but say in Baltimore, you know, certain parts of Baltimore, if you're not you don't have you're not under contract after two weekends, that's my other rule, then you're overpriced. The market has spoken. So this is a perfect time for you as a buyer to actually go in, submit an offer, could be less price with a ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar seller contribution. You know what I mean? Like this is the time for you to submit an offer like that. Uh, and, and I think that there are more buyers able to actually get under contract with the help of seller contribution so that they don't have to bring the money to the table. So it will be very interesting literally in the next month to see what the market is going to do. You know, I think people need to reset their search parameters based on what the current rates are, if they haven't locked in and what, um, you know, just kind of reset their expectations. If they've been shopping for, let's say three months. Three months ago is very different than it is today. So, and I think if you're, you know, if you're working with an agent, then absolutely have that conversation. Say, what are we looking at today? Uh, this is my monthly budget, because that number is going to change with um, uh, the rates. And so, I don't think people are actively doing that. I think a lot of people run a search and then they're saying, "I'll wait," because they're seeing these things that they just can't afford anymore. A hundred percent. Well, Aaron, Aaron nailed it right here. Aaron, perfect comment. So everybody's everybody's hearing the word crash right so we like you have the, those channels out there like look it's going to be 40 percent. so you have people like literally like okay it's going to in austin it's going to be 40 percent. aaron's comments right if it drops 10 percent, yet your interest rate goes up to eight percent nine percent and it drops only 10 percent, you are still overpaying like you're still paying more so for every one percent interest rate goes up it's like 200 dollars more towards your towards your monthly payment so Let's think about that. If you're going to buy a house for half a million dollars, we can do the we can do the uh, the math here on the side in a second. And you, you're going to get in at six percent right now. And let's say a month from now, less than that. I mean, we weren't even talking seven percent. And I just pulled up this Google, and it's saying seven percent now. So let's say it goes to seven percent, only drops ten, maybe fifteen percent. You, you're not actually saving money, and you've continued to rent probably or you know, how, whatever your situation is, everybody's not renting, but that money could have been going towards a property. It could be going towards a deduction. So, and that's, that's, what's interesting. And why I find that people want to wait. It's uh, Sarah said this a long time ago, Ian, you'll probably remember this. There is an, a cost to waiting. And I think even now as people are anticipating the market to drop, I think they're overestimating. I could be wrong. Obviously I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm looking at it this way. I just listed my house. I sold my house and I was going to hold on to it. I had no reason really to sell my house other than we have a pool. And I was afraid that if I rented my pool out, it'd become an issue with people jumping off and somebody getting hurt, jumping off our balcony. Otherwise I would, I would have kept my house. So now I'm selling a house. I really didn't want to sell. I bought a new house in the middle of rates being what four and a half percent. I do a 10 year arm on that. Um, so I still did it because it made sense for what we were doing. I'm doing a whole video on it. But what I think people need to understand though, we're going back is that the opportunity cost to wait 
or the cost to wait could get a lot more expensive if you do. And this is everybody's hoping it's going to, you know, turn even further. But literally, she and I had a conversation today. It's all about opportunity. It's either going to be a good opportunity today for somebody or a good opportunity for someone else. Who's the best opportunity for? If you've been a VA or FHA buyer, now is the opportunity to do exactly what she just said. Come in and say, hey, look, um, I noticed your price at this. You know, give us fifteen thousand dollars towards closing costs, and maybe not fifteen thousand, but whatever. Give us money towards closing costs, and then what's here's the coolest part too. How many of you on here have had to write offers guaranteeing that if it didn't appraise, that you, your buyer would, your buyer would make up the difference? Right. Everybody on here has had to write these uh, uh, appraisal waivers. Now, if you're doing VA or FHA, whatever, now is the opportunity opportunity to actually get something under contract without having that happen. So if it doesn't make value, you can come back and negotiate. I mean, that's pretty darn awesome. That's a good opportunity for people. Yeah, interest rates are higher, but what happens if you wait and they go even higher? Thoughts? So uh, if you can calculate it, basically let, let's just say six to 7% or seven to 8%. Obviously the monthly payment is going to go up. The other things that the other thing that uh, I don't think people talk about enough is the overall interest that you're going to pay for those 30 years, right? The difference, I know I made it exactly on this from a two and a half percent to whatever percent. I mean, it's a lot of money. The interest paid for 30 years between the two different interest interest, up, which means at the same time on a higher interest rate, you're paying smaller amount of your towards the principal balance in the beginning. And and with that with that you're paying less. So by the time you 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 move in five ten years, you only pay that if you make your month, minimum monthly payment. But if you have a lower interest rate, the principal balance that you pay towards is bigger. So so there's that big difference. There's the monthly difference, and then there's the overall difference in the total interest paid. Me personally, I became I, again I, my first house I bought in July of two thousand and seven, <laughs> right before the crash. <laughs> right before it crashed. Literally right before cash. Now, looking back, really, I thought at that time, I got married, I got engaged, and I'm like, let's buy a house together, okay? And we, I put all my money, 20% down, bought my wife a ring, like I put everything into it so that if one of us can't pay, one of us don't have a job, we can pay a monthly mortgage. I think it was like $1,600, $1,700 mortgage payment at the time. And And I thought about this all the time is that, I waited, personally waited. Well, I'm going to save money. Let me save money. Let me save money so that I can put down that 20%, which I did at the worst time possible. If I bought a house literally even five years ago without putting that 20% down, I would have had the house, sold a house at a peak of the market, get the equity out and put a down payment for, for the house that I, I bought, you know, back in 2007. So, so the mindset, as you said, Jeremy, before is that, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I had that mindset. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I'm just going to save that money. I'm going to save that money. But the thing is that the money that you save it won't go up that high. It is just dollar for dollar, literally dollar for dollar um, to, to what the market is going to do for you. So, so that, those are the things that I think about all the time personally. Thanks for watching this short of the Real Amigos podcast. For more live streams, hit here. For more clips, hit here. We'll catch you on the next one.